Hello again, uh, we will uh, start from where we left off uh, last time that was uh, study of uh, de Haas von Alphen effect and the de Haas von Alphen effect what I showed you was that uh, the energy levels bunch together in the uh, presence of a magnetic field and uh, uh, you know, for example, when B is 0 there is a continuous set of states which are occupied, when B is non-zero you see that uh, there are discrete states which are harmonic oscillator states and these harmonic oscillator states get filled up and depending upon the value of B the degeneracy increases and the energy of these harmonic oscillators which is proportional to B also keeps increasing. So, that when the L when the level goes above the Fermi level the electrons that were there somewhere here will fall back into this one because there are extra states, uh, states available as the degeneracy increases with B. And you see for example that at B1 and B3 we have completely filled harmonic states and uh, this uh, complete filling of the harmonic states occurs at say let us say lambda value. So, when the number of electrons is equal to the degeneracy psi h times lambda plus 1 which is the energy uh, then the number of electrons uh, will fill exactly the uh, uh, harmonic oscillator level completely. Uh, well, we, uh, we also see that so this uh, lambda plus 1 which is the maximum uh, uh, quantum number of the harmonic oscillator which is occupied is fully occupied that is is actually periodic in 1 by h and because it is periodic in 1 by h many properties are periodic in 1 by h. We can construct the total energy. So, if I want to find out what the total energy is uh, total energy uh, that is excluding kinetic energy due to motion along the z axis motion out of plane. That can be written as supposing lambda is the uh, highest uh, lambda is the highest occupied uh, quantum number of the highest occupied harmonic oscillator the highest occupied state quantum number then the energy is actually given by E equal to sigma over L is equal to 0 to lambda uh, psi h times h cross omega c which is the energy fundamental frequency of the harmonic oscillator the energy of the harmonic oscillator times L plus half. So, this is a simple uh, arithmetic series and can be uh, rather uh, arithmetic series and can be easily summed up and when you sum it up what you get is 1 half of psi h h cross omega c uh, lambda plus 1 the whole squared. So, supposing some states are not occupied that is if the state lambda plus 1 is partly occupied Okay, the contribution coming from that to the total energy this will contribute in the following energy for uh, the total energy. This will contribute let us say E 1 let me call it E 0 to the total energy and we can write down what E 1 is. E 1 is equal to h cross omega c now lambda plus 1 state is the one that is partly occupied. So, it is lambda plus 3 by 2 times the number of electrons there is the total number of electrons in the system n minus the number of uh, st uh, harmonic oscillation states which are completely filled. So, this is what we get. So, we can get the total energy 
E total is equal to E 0 plus E 1 and we can plot E total as a function of 1 upon B. Let me plot it here. This is 1 upon H because I have used a symbol H for magnetic field. So, I will continue with that and then I will have a E tot, a total energy and the total energy is periodic. Okay. So, it goes like that and the partly occupied states contribute a quantity which can be shown the contribution of partly occupied states to the total energy is shown here and uh, that uh, let me highlight it. So, what we see is that this contribution keeps uh, comes down at you know, periodically and again goes up gradually comes down periodically because this uh, vertical change is because one of the states uh, harmonic oscillator states has become exactly uh, uh, becomes say the energy of that becomes equal to the Fermi energy. So, whenever E f is equal to uh, lambda plus half h cross omega c then you will see that suddenly there is a jump in the energy because all the states there are having the highest energy levels. So, this is how it keeps going and this is the periodicity is in 1 by h and we can also show that the magnetic moment which is given by minus delta E tot by delta h is equal to the magnetic moment mu. Uh, incidentally in three dimensional systems you must also introduce the uh, kinetic energy due to motion out of plane and that I have not done and uh, that requires a little bit more algebra. So, I have uh, skipped it. So, but let, I will just show you how mu will vary. So, the way mu will vary is you know this is mu and this is 1 by h and it will vary as uh, uh, this is diamagnetic. So, it will vary as so this is the de Haas von Alphen effect. is a uh, periodic variation of magnetic moment or magnetic susceptibility as a function of 1 by h. It can be shown that the period is related to the area of the Fermi surface cross section area to the cross sectional area of the Fermi surface. So, what you can do is you can apply the magnetic field uh, in different directions compared to the orientation of the single crystal and you will see that uh, uh, you will be exploring different parts of the Fermi surface and from the data we can uh, build up the Fermi surface. The Fermi surface can be constructed can be constructed uh, from the data on de Haasmann alpha effect. Well, I think uh, I have uh, said all I wanted to say about uh, the de Haas von Alphen effect. Now, so far I have been basically con uh, this thing studying systems which had full periodicity that is systems where there were no defects or no impurities in the system. Now, what I am going to do is 
I will try to address a different issue. The issue is one of impurities in uh, uh, crystals. So, let me think of point impurities. So, I want to know what kind of energy levels uh, the system will have because of these point impurities in crystals. For this let me look at the uh, Hamiltonian Re let me write down the Hamiltonian of the system as H equal to H naught plus U H naught is the Hamiltonian of the perfect crystal the Hamiltonian of the perfect crystal and u is a perturbation due to the impurity. H naught can be solved completely and what we get are the eigenstates of the crystal perfect crystal H naught E n uh, k uh, uh, sorry H naught psi psi n k is equal to this is of course function of k and r E n k psi n k comma r and psi n k of r are the block functions. So, we have the following psi n k comma r is equal to e to the i k dot r times u n k comma r actually k can go as a subscript it does not matter. So, u n k of r has the lattice periodicity. and psi and k of r are uh, complete sets in the sense the, uh, the psi and k, r, k of r form a complete orthonormal set. So, I can write down the condition that psi n prime k prime dot r psi n k of r d cubed r is equal to delta n n prime delta k minus k prime. So, they form a complete orthonormal set given that they form a complete orthonormal set we can now use that as a basis. So, what we have is the full Hamiltonian h times psi is equal to e times psi we can expand psi in the in terms of block states psi can be written as sum over the band states n is the band index the coefficient phi and k times psi n k comma r d cubed k that is I am summing over all the block states psi n k comma r or with coefficients phi and k of r over all the bands. So, I am summing over the entire crystal solution of the crystal Hamiltonian in principle. So, now I can substitute this into my Schrodinger equation for the full Hamiltonian. So, if I substitute this into the Schrodinger equation what I will get is the following sigma over n integral phi and k h naught psi n k comma r d cubed k 
plus sigma over n integral phi n k u psi n k comma r d cubed k is equal to e times sum over n phi n k integral phi n k all these are vectors phi n k psi n k comma r psi n k comma r d cubed k. So, what we can do is the usual uh, trick of multiplying by on the left hand side on the left hand side by <coughs> psi n prime k prime comma r and integrating over real space. We get sigma over n integral phi n k integral it should be a complex conjugate that I am multiplying by psi star n prime k prime r h naught psi n k comma r d cubed r d cubed k plus sigma over n uh, integral over phi n k psi n star psi n prime star this is k prime k prime comma r u psi n k comma r uh, d cubed r d cubed k this is equal to e times sigma over n uh, integral phi n k psi n prime star k prime comma r psi n k comma r d cubed r d cubed k. The integral over real space gives the following. I will get the following things integral psi n prime k prime r h naught psi n k comma r d cubed r this is equal to E n uh, integral is a star psi n prime star k prime r psi n k comma r d cubed r. So, this will be E n delta n n prime delta k minus k prime. We define n prime k prime u n k as integral psi n prime k prime comma r star u psi n k comma r d cube r. 
then we can also then we also have integral which is just the last one that we had which was psi n prime star k prime comma r psi n k comma r is nothing but delta n n prime delta k minus k prime. Now, if I use these results in my equation here which is the psi n the whole thing which uh, which is uh, summed over all n and integrated over all k space then what I would get is the following sigma over n integral phi n k e n of k times delta k minus k prime d cubed k times delta n n prime plus sigma over n uh, integral phi n k u n comma n prime k uh, minus k prime d cubed k this is equal to e times sum over n of delta n n prime integral phi n k delta k minus k prime d, d cubed k. So, what do I get from here? I can rearrange it and write it in the following fashion E n prime phi n prime k prime plus sigma over n and then uh, integral phi n k prime u n prime k prime u n k d cubed k is equal to e times phi n prime k phi n prime k prime. So, I can actually write it in the following fashion that is I can write it as E n prime minus E phi n prime k prime plus sigma over n n prime k prime u n k integral phi n k prime d cubed k is equal to 0. So, this is just nothing but a formality you know uh, expanding the whole thing in uh, complete set of states. So, this is something that we have done many a times. What we will do is now we will consider a sim very simple case. Consider a very simple case which is n prime k prime u n k is equal to some v naught delta n n prime delta k minus k prime. So, if we did that then my equation simplifies and I have E n prime minus E phi n prime k prime plus V naught I will have a uh, integration there. So, V naught delta n n prime will take care of the fact that uh, uh, it will uh, come only when uh, the diagonal element is uh, 
uh, when the bands are the same and I will have the other thing that I will get is phi n k prime yeah this is what I will get. So, now what I can actually do is the following that is this is equal to 0. So, what I can actually assume is that let us assume E n prime minus E is non zero. Okay, this is E n prime k prime. I shall put the index. Okay, e n prime k prime is non zero. Let me see. Yeah, that is ok. So, if I were to put that uh, is non zero and divide the whole thing equation by E n k prime minus e. So, what would we get? We get phi n prime k prime plus v naught times integral phi n k prime 1 upon e n k prime minus e d cubed k prime is equal to 0. This is not k prime, this is now, having done that, what we can do is uh, we will multiply by phi and k and integrate over the entire k space, the whole over the entire Brillouin zone. So, if I did that I will get phi n prime k prime d cubed k prime plus v naught uh, integral phi n k k prime 1 upon e n k prime minus e d cubed k prime d cubed k is equal to 0. Now, this part I can write it slightly differently that is we, we shall write integral 1 upon oh, this will be phi n. So, if this is phi n k prime then this will be e n k. So, we will have 1 upon E n k minus E d cubed k. We can actually write it as the energy levels are discrete as integral over some density of states g of E prime divided by uh, e, e n k minus E d cubed d e prime ok. So, uh, this is actually nothing but just the sum of our states right. So, if if everything is discrete then this is just sum over all the Eigen states n comma k e and k minus e. And so, what will happen the equation that I get is the following. So, I can rewrite this equation in a slightly different form. I can write down as integral phi n k d cubed k plus v naught times sigma over n comma k 1 upon e n k minus e 
times integral uh, phi and k d cubed k is equal to 0. So, what I really have is I can actually cancel out the integrations on the both sides. So, that I can have I can just cancel this out ok. So, I have the following equation at the end of it 1 plus v naught sigma over n comma k 1 upon e n k minus e is equal to 0. So, this is the equation that I will get and I will continue from here uh, in the next lecture for now I will stop here and we will continue again in the next lecture. Thank you.